Alex, what are you doing? You do well. I don't think you your doing? vehicle's safe. Alex, what are you doing? Yeah, no, no. Alex is putting a condom on my foot. Oh. Well, as long as it, as long as nobody tries to hump it, I guess we're fine. <laughs> I got a problem, Beach. It, it, it broke. I imagine. Oh no, that means you're pregnant, Alex. Did it burn right through? Like no. Wait, let me try it one more time. I hope you brought two because it's a dual exhaust. God damn it. Even take this from you! <laughs> oh my god! What? Oh, you're a dumbass. <laughs> he held on his hand and I'm like, sure, I see what you're carrying. I will totally take those from you. Why did I take them from him? It was morning in, well, a whole bunch of places all at once. We'd spent the night at a retrofitted World War II Air Force barracks in Watson Lake, but now, exploring the town's famous Sign Forest, I wasn't even totally sure which way was north. Huh. Oh my god. What? Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, you can't be serious. <laughs> Welcome to the Yukon. Today you'll be traveling to Faro, home of the world's largest open pit lead zinc mine. Ooh, huh. neat. Okay. To experience the true Yukon travel experience, you will now drive eight hours along the Canal Road, Yukon's Highway 6. According to the Territorial Highway Department, the road conditions are difficult. I can't do that again. I don't think Gandalf can do that again. It's starting to squeak. There uh, are so many other places we could have gone. Yeah, like Orlando. Or Nova Scotia. I've seen like three different places that I've played hockey at. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody split up and look for the pharaoh sign. All right. All right. Yeah, okay. Boy, that signpost for us is kind of weird. Yeah. I think it's weird because it's like there's all this great stuff here. Everyone gets to leave their mark, right? Yeah. But because there's, it's kind of fun to look at where everybody came from. Yeah. But one place is as far away as the next place to me. Yeah. They just all kind of feel like, oh, they're all, everybody's come from a way to be here. Yeah. I'm more interested in the fact that it's just so big. Yeah. And that of all places that that might spring up, it's like, yeah, Watson Lake was the place where something like this just sprung out of the ground. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I liked it. I like it too. I lied to you yesterday when I told you that the road turns to rainbows and all the trees are made of cotton candy. Yeah, well, I mean, that's not your fault. It's Graham who's sending us to another hell road. Ugh. I don't, like, I don't mind those kind of roads. Like, I, it's not the end of the world, although eight hours on one sounds like not great. I'm just worried about Gandalf. Yes. I don't, I don't think Gandalf can take eight hours of not great roads. I think your arms will get, like, really tired too. Steve. Yeah, it's not great. But I guess that's the way we gotta go. I'm not looking forward to 
this awful road. Yeah, I, I don't mean, want to deal with another one. Given how Graham put, like, he's like, oh, yeah, just head down, head down the Niska Highway, and it'll be fine. And it's just the worst road. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even have to drive it. Yeah. And we had probably the best car for it. Absolutely. And then James is like, oh, I can put my top down. Yeah. Ian's like, I can change lanes real fast. Yep. I'm like, I'll have a working spine by the end of the <laughs> trip, so. Stopping and sleep are traps. It lets your body remember what it's like to be not in this car. Instead of wherever we're crashing tonight, yeah. we should just sleep in the car. I think so. I, I think it would be better. It can lean back. That's all yeah. we need. I've taken a few naps in this car, so I can tell you it's not that bad. In the Crown Vic, we hadn't been sleeping well either. We didn't get back to the hotel like 10 o'clock. Yeah. By the time we finished eating and everything else. Yeah. And then it was still super bright out. It was weird. Yeah. And I guess that's what we have to deal with from now on. I'm glad they had like heavy, opaque, like blinds, like the pull down blinds to block oh, yeah. all the light. Like you have to though. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to survive. No, exactly. I would like to see this place when it's dark all the time. Yeah, right? That's my jam. I love it when it gets dark early <laughs> in the winters. Oh yeah? It's my favorite. We hadn't come too far into it, but the scenery in the Yukon didn't seem that different. It's just like it's a, lots of trees and lakes and... Less mountains. I mean, now that yeah. I said that, there's... there's some, way in the distance. Way in the distance, there's some mountains. But yeah. It, like, leveled out considerably. Yeah. All of a sudden, random. Like, it just, it's like the mountains when we were driving in here disappeared. Yeah. And now it's just kind of like forest. Hilly forest. Yeah. We soon approached an actual thing to see. So we pulled over at the rest stop for the Great Divide, where I proceeded to read some interpretive signage. Gentlemen, welcome to the Continental Divide. Why? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's a thing when I mean, we're here. But you're standing on the Continental Divide, the ridge line that separates two of the largest river drainages in North America. If you were to drop a leaf in the Rancheria River to the east, it would flow out to the Liard River near Watson Lake and continue to the Mackenzie River in the Northwest Territories and eventually reach the Beaufort Sea. But if you were to drop a leaf into the Swift River to the west, the current would take it to Teslin Lake and then the Teslin River to the Bering Sea in the Pacific Ocean, a journey of 3,680 kilometers or 2,300 miles. So what, you're, what this sign is saying is that if I drop a leaf in one river, it goes one place. If I drop a leaf in another river, it goes a completely different place. That's right. So what I'm hearing is if I go pee in that river over there, and I go pee in that river over there, then we're pee's gonna end up in two different oceans. Let's go. I, what, what if we pee right on the divide? <laughs> then it balances on its edge. Yeah. It just builds up. You have to be very careful just to call them. I didn't expect you to answer that seriously. No. I didn't. While Adam and I used the provided toilets, the sticker bandit took their opportunity. Oh, we got dinged again. Yeah. Yeah. I You're... think someone's trying to trap, like these are our avatars. Yeah. And I think they're used to represent our souls. Oh, they try to keep us bound to the car. Yeah. I see. I have nothing in my hands. You are... I'm picking my nose, I think. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That doesn't seem like you. That's more me, I think. <laughs> yeah, well. At least it's nobody we murdered. So we have that going for us. With Ben and I in a race by proxy to two separate oceans, we got back underway, and I was very much enjoying this Yukon driving. It's really nice out here. It's a montagna, and another montagna, and another montagna, and it's the montagna family. The kind of cool thing that the Yukon has going for it, at least that I've noticed today, is a lot of flat and then a lot of gorgeous mountains. Like we come around the bend and yeah. you see just Really big snow pitch. swept big huge mountains in front of you mm -hmm. and every time you make that turn it's just a brand new set of those mountains and it's kind of incredible we found mountains again 
Yeah, it's so nice. Yeah. To see them. I mean, after that brief period where it was like, are we really just on top of mountains at this point? Yeah. Did we reach the highest point? Yeah. And no, we didn't, because oh my goodness. Holy moly. <laughs> It's like this one big one right in front of us. God, this is gorgeous. Great googly mowgli. It's quite an eyeful. One thing that this trip has really done is sort of uh, solidified how cool I think our province is. Yeah, our province is pretty ridiculous. And it's good that we enjoyed BC so much because we were about to head back there. We also just crossed back into BC. What? Yeah. We're going backwards, James. Super. Wait, what? Natural, British Columbia. That's backwards, Ian. I know, but... We're dipping back into BC. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 no, it's good. Are you uh, sure? Yeah, we're just dipping into BC before oh, we come back okay. up into Yukon. Just a short jaunt. Okay, yeah. that, I can deal with that. For whatever reason, presumably geography or because BC's colonial border used to extend another two degrees of latitude north, Yukon Highway 1 briefly dips back across the border into BC. Not that there's any way off that section of road, so this border recrossing is functionally meaningless. Wait, so right now we're in BC? Yes. Okay. We kind of made a whole big thing about making it to the Yukon yesterday. Right? I mean, that's good. I can't be outside of British Columbia for more than 36 hours or I will turn into a pumpkin. I think we're boned on the tail end of this trip then. Shoot. Okay, that's fine. As long as I'm in pumpkin form and haven't started to rot. And anyway, we had more immediate problems. Oh no. god, gravel. Ooh, oh no. Uh -oh. This this is Oh spaghetti. Oh, this is a lot more what I expected the uh, the roads in the Yukon to be like. It's, this isn't terrible. It's not terrible, but it's not fun. What happened to our highway? Hope you like gravel, because we got you a bunch of it. I mean, I'm not going to complain about this road, considering we're about to go into one of the like the roughest roads, apparently, that we've gone on so far. I forgot about that. Yeah, we're kind of putting you shoving it into the back of my mind. Poor Gantel. You got this, buddy. Like, I hope this is just a resurfacing and this isn't what the roads are like forever now. Unless BC just, like, decided, like, that road doesn't start in BC, and it don't end in BC, so we don't care. <laughs> feel the whole car rattle. No, my windshield, please, no, Ian, please. Be kind to Gandalf. We're currently the only windshield without a crack. Yeah. And I want to keep it that way. I decided to take my mind off flying gravel by bothering Ben. You know, I feel like you haven't jumped in enough lakes. Why do you want me to jump in things all the time? I don't know, it's just funny. My suffering brings you amusement? Yeah, a little. Like, you jumped in that one lake, but that was like six weeks ago. <laughs> that was like four days ago. Oh God. Was it four days? No, I think it was actually like five days ago. Really? I don't remember. Time has lost all me. Yeah, time, I don't, I don't remember anything. But then, in some sort of karmic revenge, the road got so awful and muddy, I could no longer ignore it. In fact, it was getting difficult to control Gandalf. Oh God, get up, get up, get up, get up. Jesus. <laughs> what are you doing? Losing control. Of your life? No, of this car. No, oh, tomato, tomato. Oh, that's real good. Yeah. Molly. That rut if I can. Oh, that's good. Get in that one instead. This is a little surprising for a marked highway. Yeah. If this is even a start of the bad road conditions that were on our instructions this morning, I'm not looking forward to this. Yeah, we gonna die. Jesus, Alex, we're not gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> we actually can't get traction here in the car. Uh, I thought we were done with mud and dust. Luckily, we didn't have to drive very far before the highway traffic slowed to a halt. I made the most of it. Game says, what's the dealio? Why are we stopped like this? There's a stoplight in the middle of the, well, the side of the highway. Well, it's like, it's a painting of a stoplight. Why? Cinepod a stoplight. How do we know when to go if it's a sign? Here, just wait. You guys have baby eyes. Let me check it out.
So there's a sign underneath the stoplight that says wait for pilot vehicle. Can I be the pilot vehicle? Do any of you have a pilot's license? I have a train license. I can drive a forklift. I have my Wemyss. My car is made of jets. That kind of makes it a pilot vehicle. They're basically just ferrying people back and forth to ensure that the road is safe from one end to the other. My father-in-law drove a pilot vehicle for a while, actually. I think you should tell Adam about your dad driving a pilot vehicle. Yes, Beach, bore Adam again. First of all, Beach is never boring. That's a lie, but what's second? What is second? Second. Give of me all. some anime fact. You can't look to him to find out what's second. <laughs> After some time, the pilot vehicle returned eastbound and gathered up a new group of three cars before the light turned red, leaving us to wait again. Alex decided to spread some cheer in his own way. Hey, Adam. Yeah? You see the M&M? Uh, yeah. You want it? I don't want it enough to get out of the car for it. <laughs> this is weird. You ever just watch Beach do stuff? I don't want one. I, 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 I. Spit it out. No, I want it. <laughs> Jesus. That was mean. Hurtful. <laughs> I got another one for you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Hey, Alex. I'm bored. Alex, anyone ever told you you're fucking weird? <laughs> what did you think about? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what just happened? Alex came over and threw an M&M in the car, so I picked it up and threw it, and it landed through the sunroof and hit Ian. Yeah. <laughs> what?! I'm gonna let this go because you gave me food. <laughs> but ask Alex what happens when you drop food in my car or otherwise. I'm not in your car though. Yet. And once you are, everything that happens in here is nice and legal. <laughs> All right, cars are coming back. Let's go. Like, low key, I can't wait to see what this horrible threat is up ahead. It'd be like it's just a big monster like in uh, the end of the Watchmen comic. The real monster was whoever removed the road surface and replaced it with mud. Actually, yeah, this is actually really terrible. I'm glad we're along this kind of shit, dirt, muddy road. I was really getting concerned that the Gandalf was getting too clean in the last couple days. Yeah. We're going just under 50 and it is skatey. It's all fungical. Mm -hmm. We are literally driving on Ravellos. Eventually, and after even more swearing, we did it. We made it to the other side. Yay! Bar Mac. Mac. Sweetest of Jesus. Everybody salute. Not only had our brief revisit to BC been bizarre, but it had also been slow and unpleasant. But also, also, it was over. Hey, guess what? We're passing back into the Yukon. Yeah! Yay! We're back on track. We're moving north. Thank God. BC sucks. Yeah, I never want to go back to BC. Agreed. In Sabine, we were happy to be back on our way, but we weren't able to enjoy ourselves for very long. Huh? Info display. Battery low. Gas. Battery. What the? We might need to dismiss that. You know what? I'm just not going to mention this until we get to where we're going, but... Okay. Clearly, the electrics are working, because electrics are happening, but that is a disturbing development. It might be my power steering, actually. It's a feeling the steering does feel a bit heavier right now. Yeah, it's not undrivable. I'm going to tap the brakes. Okay, those still work. That's good. Still works. That's good. After checking all the systems I could, I felt confident that whatever was bothering Sabine would hold until we arrived in Faro. I was wrong. I mean, I don't really have any. Oh, okay. Uh, we gotta pull over immediately. 
We've got a fan Immediately. Bell warning. Fan bell warning. It was by pure luck that we were meters away from a rest stop where I could take stock of the situation. Back when we were waiting for the pilot vehicle to come in, I got this message on my info display, which says washer level low, which is ominous in itself because just because of the pixel rot in the info display. But then a couple kilometers back, I got a notification on the console saying triangle of exclamation point battery, which didn't seem to be a problem. It just seemed my power steering just seemed to be getting a little bit uh, down and a little bit hard. And I thought no problem there. That's not an issue. Then the car dinged. The info display said check fan belt and the engine temperature was in the red significantly. So I need to get under the hood and check the fan belt. And this is a sob, so this isn't unprecedented. Yeah. Sounds like a fan belt issue to me. Yeah, the fan sounds like it's <laughs> running. Shut up, James, and I would know. <laughs> oh, 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 oh yeah. no! Well, oh, the fan belt's off. Yeah. The fan belt's off. This is, this is debris from something. I yeah. think it's when the fan belt disintegrated. Yeah. Once the engine finally calmed down, I could start forming a diagnosis. This all happened rather quickly. Okay. We, we, the car said, check fan belt. <laughs> That's good. That was, and thankfully that was just at the top of that hill there. Okay, okay. So we haven't been driving on uh, a uncooled engine, which is important with a very big and turbocharged engine like this. I noticed fluid flying out here and I was worried about that until I thought, no, the engine just probably super overheated. So that's probably just uh, coolant that's venting. Oh no. Uh oh. This is a part of my air filter assembly. It was. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, you can take that right out now. Well, I'm not, you shouldn't be able to because. Oh, f Did it do it? Okay, so yeah. God, it did an oopsie boingo. Now, is the fan belt still in one piece? I mean, the fan belt is there. Uh, also, this, I don't know why that's not secured. Oh, I do know why that's not secured, because it's not actually tightened in. Why the f isn't that tightened in? It might have shaken loose while you were driving. Oh, it, it 100% shook, shook loose while I was driving. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna actually just nut that off there. Hold for laughter. There we go. Now we can get in there at the actual belt assembly, which... Okay, now is it in one piece? Well, there's a lot of belt here that goes a lot of different directions. Okay, oh so God, Beach! Look in here. There's usually a. Ooh. Oh, that's a bunch of melted plastic, probably from that piece that came off. Uh, well, let's get this belt out of here. Yeah, first if, it's, of all. if it's in one piece, you'll be fine. Okay. Okay. And the belt appears to be in one piece. Good. I'm gonna go check the manual. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Oh yeah. There's a whole bunch of it just, just burned on the bottom of the thing. Oh. The Saab manual comes in this very, very nice leather uh, leather package <laughs> embossed with the Saab logo. Have you had an opportunity to open it? I, I had to uh, to read things about it that were related to control of the vehicle and its various subsystems. I poked buttons till it worked. I don't think you can poke buttons to fix this. No. <laughs> How's the belt look, Alex? Um, I think your belt's probably gonna be fine in this okay. case. So it'll be enough to get us next town anyway. So the belt did not tear. That's important. And all we have to do is this. Your four cylinder, right? Yep. Oh, oh my oh God. God. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. You're, you're good at video game puzzles. Oh no. Okay. The other problem is like, how the frick do we get it down under all this? Shit? We get someone underneath the vehicle and help out pulling. We chalk the wheels. Yep. Get we on the chalk ground. the hell out of the wheels. Yeah. I, I've, I would volunteer to shimmy. Okay, so it's a four cylinder diagram. Yes. Okay. This is a 900 we have turbo. One of eight spools threaded. That's fine. Oh, wait a minute. Uh oh. This is the one way oh, down. Oh, fuck, Ian. That one. It's still caught on. It's still caught on. These two are there. Yep. That one's this one. Half of it is missing. It has to thread underneath that <laughs> guard. Yeah, it's not. That a looks. Yeah, that looks like that does not exist anymore. So that might be why the fan belt came loose in the first place. <sighs> Hello down there, young fella. Oh yeah, I can see. Yeah. <sighs> you need the flashlight. 
No, don't need the flashlight. Oh yeah, that's... It's broken? Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. I think this might just be beyond our ability just simply due to a lack of part. If we can get this to a place with any sort of a mechanic, they might have a part because it's seems like a pretty simple piece or they might be able to manufacture something pretty easily like this is a this is a gm vehicle it's not an actual saw up and i've been trying not to talk about that too much so it might not be too much work to get this back on the road but as it stands i'm out of ideas and i'm out of abilities and i'm out of materials even if uh that weren't the case i don't know how we would re-thread this i'm <laughs> So, uh, should we kill Beej and take his car? I mean, sucks to be Ian, I guess. The Crown Vic had problems too. I am fixing what I'm uh, thinking will be a very big problem at some point because now the, the front of my mirror has become see-through. It is all gridded and there's been so much dust that's just been blowing through here. I'm worried about catching a rock and having it go through that, through my, wind, uh, through my mirror and then rending it unsafe to drive because I don't have a, uh, left, uh, a left rear facing mirror. So I have asked if I could be provided with a little bit of similar tape because nothing sticks to duct tape like duct tape Aww. just gotta clean that corner off yeah, isn't that nice this should be a little bit better and she's ready for the road again the civility must continue so uh, what are we, day eight, Ben? Yeah. We're day eight. Gandalf, staying strong. Yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of issues like in terms of like the smoothness of the ride and like how comfortable it is to ride in it. But at the end of the day, Gandalf has not broken down even once. You need gas though? I, I'm 99% sure I have enough gas to get to where we're going. Yeah. But I refused <laughs> to break down because I ran out of gas. Yeah. And it's not my fault there's no gas between Watson Lake and uh, where we're heading right now. I mean, I think I'd rather have my car break down than have to jam a paper towel inside the windows the rain doesn't get you. It wasn't the rain, it was... It was the rain. <laughs> <laughs> get back in your car that broke down on day one. We've only got two more days left. Yeah. I feel pretty good about this. I don't think there's anything that could possibly go wrong. Why would you why would you say that? <laughs> because Are I you dare I me? dare you, world! Oh come on! Uh. I don't know if this works anymore. And I don't if this is the problem, I don't want to curse Beach's car as well. Because I'm riding in it now. I think you stay here for the moment. And so Alex and I split up amongst the surviving cars. So how much uh, you think we can get for scrap on this thing? Get f shut your dirty mouth. <laughs> Ian, the most prestigious seat in the vehicle. I will gladly take it. And for you, I have a, for all your help, I have a little present. Uh, I like birds. So I was going to put this in your grill <laughs> and share with you the joy of birds, but I, instead I'll let you uh, do with that as you will. I can snack on it on my own. Yeah, that's great. Oh, no. hey. This is your vehicle now. I need you to love it like you would yours. No, oh, okay. This is fine. <laughs> but, I mean, that was already proven. Yeah, it's also, just... it's actually just best car. Thank you. Much better. Appreciate it. Welcome to the team. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Crown Vic's rolling. Sunfire's all set. Oh my god, I waited for the sob to answer. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's very weird not having the sob radio in. <laughs> Alex, I miss you. I miss you too, buddy. Alex, you look like you're in a flea market stuffed in the back of a car. <laughs>
So, Beach. So, Adam. We picked, we up, picked a, up a passenger. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, Ian. Glad Hi. you're here. Yeah, I'm sorry your car died. Oh, me too, but I'm so proud of you, Adam. You are learning so many important <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah. So, it was time to welcome Ian to the Crown Vic. You should get caught up on how the car works. Okay. You have two cup holders there in the back. Do I? Yes, you I do. Right there. If you put anything That's in them, they will fall over. <laughs> yeah. So feel free to use them as often as you like. This, this is okay because uh, the Saab has no cup holders. Oh, really? So you've gone from zero to two cup holders. Oh, the number of working cup holders remains Me zero. The same. <laughs> in the back of the Sunfire, Alex was a little less excited. Hey, Alex. Hey, buddy. How you doing? You look not happy. Welcome to Gandalf. Gandalf is good. Yeah. Dude. Gandalf is great. And reliable. <laughs> Please stop saying that. <laughs> He's gonna be fine. It's gonna break down anytime. No. Oh god. You gotta have faith. You uh comfortable back there? Peachy keen. Just making sure. At least I still have my trophy. I'm happy to have the trophy in this car for yeah. once. Never been in this car, feels good. <laughs> Even if it is ill-gotten. I feel like a winner. I was still gonna try my best to make Alex feel welcome in Gandalf. Is there anything Ian does other than drive erratically uh, and very fast that you would like me to do to make you feel more at home? He's good company. Um, I mean, I... How far is it till our next stop? But then, Ben had a great idea to involve Alex in our traditions. You know what Alex hasn't been a part of and that we haven't done today that's really important? That's true! Welcome to Car Talk with Ben and James. I'm James. And I'm Ben, and we have a very special guest today. It's Alex! Alex! Hi. What's going on, buddy? I'm stuck in the back seat of a shitty car. Today on our show, we've got a very, very, very special topic to talk about. Passing RVs. Passing RVs. RVs are the most annoying vehicles on a highway road. Couldn't agree with you more, Ben. It's just a real pain in the butt. Yeah, yeah. Alex, what do you think? Alex might not have been having a great time, but Ben realized that Adam might be in even more trouble. I'm genuinely worried about Adam in that car with those two. Oh, he's done for. Yeah. He is a forfeit human being. On the bright side, this is now exactly like that episode of Trigun where Vash and Knives crash land on the same planet and have to fight their way through the desert. No, now he's being infected by both Ian and Beach. God. <laughs> Wish I was there. I mean, that's a little hurtful. <laughs> James and Ben were all too happy to lord the Sunfire's reliability over me, but I needed to remind them that they were on borrowed time. We're kind of glossing over the fact that, really, your reliability is now just a specter of death which is hanging over you. <laughs> <laughs> We've all had one, James. It's your turn. I mean, that's always been the case. The Sunfire of Damocles. Whatever, Ian. Our car is terrific. Whoa. Whoa. Dude. What the f***? Why did all this... We might need to clean our air filter. Oh my god! Luckily for the Sunfire, we were approaching our next stop, just across the 450 meter Teslin River Bridge. Look at this big ass bridge! This is a big old bridge. Boy, I sure do hope this bridge doesn't collapse halfway through. On the bright side, if anything goes wrong on the bridge, maybe Spider-Man will come and save us. This is the biggest bridge we've been on. Oh, by like a significant margin. <laughs> Honestly, you could take one of the sections of this bridge and I still think it would be the biggest bridge that we've gone on. Yeah. The bridge led us to the town of Teslin, and while the rest of us enjoyed a truck stop lunch, Ian got on the phone. Exactly. Yeah, I think, I think the wheel actually just came apart on the tensioner. While Ian was trying to solve his car, Ben improved our car. There. It's officially my boy. Uh, you hate that you love it. I hate that I love it. <laughs> After lunch, we regrouped in the parking lot. Can we please talk about the size of that bridge? I've seen bigger. That's really long. I mean, it's probably like the most infrastructure in this town. How many absolute units is it? Four. 
Hey! I just got off the phone with the tow truck truck company. Yeah. We got some good news. They're willing to come on and pick up Sabine. Yay! But they need a person there with license and the keys. Well, that sounds like you. Yeah, you fit that description perfectly. That's pretty much me. So I'm gonna go back and wait with the car, and uh, I guess I'll see you guys later. All right, All right. I'll see ya. Right. Later. Hey, uh, do I need to wait with you? Oh, uh, technically no, and also practically no, because there is only one seat in the tow truck. Team Crown Vic. Oh man! Oh wow! <laughs> It's kind of sad, really. Ian's gone. Yeah. Alex almost immediately switched cars. We have an Alex. Yeah, different passenger. Yeah. Which I am, I have no problem with. You have no feelings strong either way? No, I am glad to have Alex in my car. This will be fun. So you're glad to be Rita V. Ian? That's not what I was saying at all. I am sorry that Ian has decided that he decided to walk back to be with his precious vehicle and values yeah. that more than our friendship. <laughs> I didn't leave you. you. You've been with me the whole time. <laughs> yeah. So we're down to two cars. Yes. Five people. <laughs> yeah. And we're leaving Ian in the wilds of the Yukon. I think he'll be fine. He's used to being on his own, right? Yeah, that's fair. Besides, what does Ian say? Ever forward. Which is why I had picked up some light reading so Ben and I could plan ahead for the end of our trip. In the good news area, yes, I picked up this Dawson City guide. Oh, 2018. So I don't want to find us some useful information about Dawson City. Uh, there's a place we can buy DVDs from called Jimmy's Place. Sick. I could use some new DVDs. Want a true Yukon experience? Yep. Complete this Dawson City to-do list and you'll be calling yourself a sourdough in no time. Okay. Take your picture atop the dome. I know what that is. Okay. It's like a, it's a road that leads up that looks over all of Dawson City. All right. Yep. Okay. Uh, find 10 heritage sites or buildings. Isn't that literally every building? I'm there sure. are over 40 around Dawson. Well, here we go. Dare to kiss the sourdough cocktail. Yep. I'm going to do that for sure. All right. It's literally a, it's like, a shot, isn't it? It's a pretty yeah, with a literal actual toe in it. Wait, what? Yeah. Like somebody, like, well, hold on. Uh, yeah. Like there is an actual toe that's kept in salt, that's been preserved. What? And you put it in the shot. That sounds freaking awful. That's the whole, whole point. You put the toe in the shot, you take the shot, and you let the toe touch your lips. All right, man. I'll go. Oh. I'll do the thing with you. I had two things I wanted to do when I found out what we were doing for this trip. Leave a sign behind at the sign for us, which we did today. Yeah. And do the toe shot. Because those are literally the only two things in the Yukon that I actually know, knew about pre-going into this trip. <laughs> okay. Yukon's weird. While Ben pondered kissing a preserved human toe, I was developing a theory about one of our colleagues. Wait, is there a chance Ian faked his whole fan belt thing just so he could get towed and didn't have to go along the terrible road? That's a good question. Hey, uh, hey Adam and Alex. Yeah, what's up? Do you possibly maybe think that Ian faked this whole car breakdown so he didn't have to take this terrible road we're about to go do? Benjamin. Uh, please explain to us how he faked one of his pulleys exploding. Maybe he loosened it when we left, and he knew at about this point it would break down on him. He's not a villain in Dudley Do Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, have you looked at Ian? He fits the, like the the entire archetype. I'll have you know he's a respectable gentleman. Look, all I'm saying is that Ian's a crafty guy. You never know. You're right, I never know. <laughs> As if we weren't already so alone on this highway, the road immediately around us felt even more empty. It continues to be weird 
not have any in here. Because for the last basically eight days, whenever I've been driving, yeah. I either have sight of that Saab out of the front of my car or in my rear view mirror. Yeah. And it's not there anymore. I feel bad. We gave we gave him a lot of crap for his driving. I mean, yes and no, because I really what I want is to find out that it was because of his driving. Car that his car down, broke yeah. down. I mean, I would not I want the doubt tow, it. I want the tow truck guy to get there and be like, uh, it looks like you've been uh, merging really aggressively. Uh, has that been the case? <laughs> Man, and it looks like you you went like 56 kilometers on a really bumpy road at like 40 miles an hour. Yeah. Did you race this down in an abandoned airfield? <laughs> Me? If this thing broke down right now, I don't care. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I don't have the investment in this car that Ian has in his car. It is so unbelievably clear that of all three cars and all three drivers, Ian is the one who cares the most about his vehicle. That sounds like a him problem. <laughs> Unfortunately, we still had an us problem. Yukon Highway 6, the Kennel Road used to be a pipeline access road to move crude oil during World War II, and while the pipeline itself no longer exists, the 450-kilometer road is still maintained by the Territorial Highway Authority during the summer. So, even in late May, it had only been open to traffic for a matter of days. Uh, According to the map we were given... How bad is this, this road going to be? Okay, it's already gravel. Okay. okay. It was immediately clear that this road had already claimed its share of victims. Oh, oh wow! My no. God! No! Fucking no! <laughs> I no! Oh my God! Hell no! <laughs> no! No! I don't like it. This is ominous. Yeah, I don't really like the look of this. Is this where cars go to die? <laughs> this is bullshit. This is where cars go to die. Oh, I'm pulling over. Well, I mean, this can't be where cars go to die because the sob is in here. <laughs> Sob's not here yet. <laughs> I hate it. No. I hate everything about it. Thanks, I hate it. Yeah, thanks, I hate it. <laughs> uh-uh. -uh. Oh, hell no. 226 kilometers on that road? I can make it. We're not doing this. No, no, I can make it. No, your car already broke down. Ian is gone. Yeah. Uh-uh, no, Gandalf makes it. Cars, my friends, are a currency to be used to reach our end destination. Yeah, but uh, some bumpy road is not a gatekeeper. Here's the thing, Graham has already told us we gotta do that eight hour drive to get to Faro because that's where he's expecting us to be. Hang on. Graham isn't here. We don't need to listen to anything he has to say. <laughs> Why don't we just go back, go to Whitehorse, and find a motel? Ooh, I like that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's go. Let's yeah. go. Let's just go. Let's go, White Horse! Woo! I like this plan way better. Yeah, just ignore Graham and take the most direct route to a city that has a hotel. All oh, those clouds. Yeah, they look oh nice. Oh, God. Good Lord, this is pretty. We got some nice new fancy trees. Look at all them trees. Roads real nice and newly paved. Big fluffy clouds and a blue sky. Are you sure we don't live in a painting? Why did they call it White Horse? I don't know. All right. I could make something up. Yeah, do okay. that. Because uh, we're on a TV show.
Look at that. Oh, goddamn. Hot diggity. That's some good look. Like the, the way that the, the light and the, the shadow. Yeah. There we go. White Horse City Center exit two kilometers. Hey, look, it's the airport. Let's get a plane to go home. Is this White Horse? I think it is. It sure is. Horse. We down, made it. Down the valley. Edo. Yay, we made it to White Horse. Yay, we're in White Horse. This was so much better than 266 kilometers of hell. Ricky's all day grill. Oh, hell yeah. I'm in for that exotic food. Downtown is bumping. Oh, <laughs> damn. <gasps> Wi-Fi. AC. Pet rooms. Pet rooms. Is there just a room full of pets? <gasps> and there's a Ricky's. Why are you so excited about Ricky's? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that sounds good, Ian. All right, we'll see you soon. Ian says, don't even worry about it. That sounds like Ian. Yeah. 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 It's a shame he couldn't be here. Yeah. Man, imagine if we had done what Graham wanted us to do, though. <laughs> We'd still be driving. We might be dead in that auto graveyard. <laughs> or a regular graveyard. Yeah. This is beautiful, though. Damn straight. Gorgeous. Picturesque. It's majestic. Turns out Alex has exactly two nails from the survival kit he bought. I Perfect. Hope. That's true. Um, and then, yeah, we just need to write road quest on here and I'll sign it and stuff. So yeah, sure. I have Sharpies in my bag. <laughs> How suspiciously convenient. The whiteboard that Alex brought was probably just left over from the MS building, which is where Moonbase Mark IV or Moonbase Delta was. Uh, so that's kind of funny. This hammer just kind of was in the car when we picked it up. Uh, I've been carrying it around for no good reason until now. We can do this properly. So I sing the theme song? Road quest. <laughs> Fantastic. Come find it. Come find it and take a photo with it. <laughs>